at Metropole TV here across all your social media platforms. My name is Simba Elijah Charles. Can I get this? Is your official economic review? This is where we're telling you all the important headlines that you're waking up to this morning. Let me introduce the panel that we have for you this morning. Before we introduce that first story, we are joined by David Gitonga, who's the managing director of Bitcoin KE. David, good morning, sir. Yes, good morning, Simba. Nice How to see you again. Nice to see you. We are also joined by Alice Anangi, who's a crypto trainer and founder of Zidden Technologies. Alice, good morning. Good morning, Simba. Looking sharp today. Thank you very much. You're looking good too. All right, let's cross over to Fidelis Wana Luenge, who's a real estate analyst. Fidelis, good morning. Good morning, Simba. Thanks for having me here this and morning. Any other time, we're also going to be joined by Gabriela Mwendwa, who's an investment associate, Horizon Africa Capital. Let me start with David Gitonga and Alice Anangi. Now, Bitcoin jumped back above 39,000 for the first time since June 16th, and is currently trading it at uh, its sixth consecutive day. And the green Bitcoin prices have also been on the rally train since July 21st, with the current price points representing the largest single day gain in over six weeks. Now, this comes on the back of big corporations pushing for investment in the cryptocurrency after JP Morgan Chase and Company told its financial advisories that they can give all their wealth management clients access to cryptocurrency funds as the bank increases its push into the crypto market. A story run by Kenya Wall Street also indicates that Amazon.com Incorporated intends to accept payments in cryptocurrencies at a certain point the sale. Now, that's the headline. David, let me start with you on that story. How do we interpret this news this morning that we are back again to the 39k mark are we going to see us rise again or it's going to be that till the end of the year yeah um good question simba i think uh it's really nice to actually see that the markets are now back uh they are quite active right now it's been a whole about two months now since the may 2021 crash yes uh, so it's actually nice to see you know there's a bit of activity now uh bitcoin is up uh there's a a bit more enthusiasm now and i think this time around we're going to see uh you know a bigger impact uh you know, uh, before when Bitcoin maybe dropped to around 30,000 and sometimes even touching below 30, uh, you remember it was uh, before that happened, there was really a lot of FOMO, a lot of fear of missing out. You know, people are just jumping on without really caring much. You know, there are the Doge coins and everything. Everything was just going up. So um, I think right now, after this retracement, people are more focused they are more serious uh we see now institutions uh, that are coming in you know uh jp morgan uh, recently we heard of elon musk talk about spacex also holding uh bitcoin so it's nice to see that um this time around there there's a bit more seriousness you know a, a lack of a better word and these institutions are likely going to be here uh, for the long run so uh so this time around, it, uh, we, we could see a bit of uh, traction and holding on. Pretty much. All right, Alice, let me just ask you to take us back to the May crash so we can make sense of um, this latest rally of a Bitcoin again. Alice, what was behind that crash? And remember, I had a conversation with you during that period and you said this could be normal the tanking that we saw in a, in a may could have been normal and then you said that now we were going to get back to higher values higher values even up pre the crash that we saw in may do you still hold to the same sentiment Alice? 
Um, oh, yes, um, definitely. When we look at what happened in May, yes. uh, was as a result of, um, we saw China, yeah, China having a crackdown on the mining farms. Um, at the same time, um, we, we saw, you know, a lot of uh, regulation come in, uh, some challenges that the market was currently facing. So uh, that whole move of the mining firms, uh, you know, uh, trying to set up base again and uh, trying to, you know, um, make people uh, do the whole migration and look for other solutions that can actually be able to, to solve the mining challenges. So that uh, exactly led to that crash because there was a lot of uncertainty. People did not know now what was going to come in to actually counter um, the whole mining situation. We also had uh, Elon Musk, who's actually uh, very influential because we know uh, crypto is more fundamentally driven. Yeah, So we had him, uh, you know, cite um, the, the uncertainty also into the market saying that um, they are not going to be accepting any more crypto, uh, especially Bitcoin payments because of the um, uh, citing the energy concern issues. Yeah. So, of course, that led to a lot of fear. Most of the people who had big positions in Bitcoin yeah, decided to exit at that particular time. Yeah? Um, but as much as that happened, at that time, we still have very strong holdings uh, in the space, and especially the fact that very many institutions got in yeah, early enough, so they could hold the market strong. Yeah? We also had um, other solutions now, energy solving solutions come in uh, to solve the mining uh, farms challenge. So we had many mining farms mag migrate um, uh, to the side of, of the U.S. Uh, we had El Salvador come in saying that they're going to be accepting, um, you know, uh, Bitcoin as legal tender. Yeah? So uh, some of these were very uh, good news, uh, of course, coming into the market and now causing a bit of stability yeah yes you know recently we've seen jp morgan now with a big announcement yeah of course we've seen uh elon musk we've seen jeff bezos come in support the technology fully saying that you know they are still holding their positions hedge funds still holding their positions yeah so this now has brought a lot of stability yeah? and now you can actually see it being replicated in the market and we we are actually very optimistic and you know uh seeing the trend we recently crossed the 50 moving average which was actually uh, the significant point of now uh turning bearish to bullish yeah so immediately we cl we crossed that yeah we we saw now very many retailers jump into the market and the price now you know getting all the way to 40k so of course let's expect to see a bit of retracement yeah because that was a very very you know uh huge pump at that particular yes. time but uh as we retrace we we now are seeing a lot of stability in the market pretty much, pretty just, much. Uh, before i let you go on that as well which part of the conversation is winning? We do have a lot of um, critiques on saying, well, the, the part that keeps on saying that Bitcoin is not why it needs to be, to be considered mainstream, and how you have these uh, bigger companies like JP Morgan and Amazon coming in with this positivity in the market. Is that the headline again in 2021? I know we spoke about the, the significance of JP Morgan again in 2020, but now they seem to have stamped their position. Amazon is in as well. Is that going to be what is going to make the market stabilize at a certain point? Well, we are hoping so because this is very big. Yeah, this shows that actually, if we have a huge bank, yeah, yes, uh, and JP Morgan has actually been at the forefront of blockchain technology, not just uh, no uh, providing the Bitcoin funds to uh, some of their wealthy investors. JP Morgan actually have their own blockchain network that solves remittance issues in the US and Europe, you know. Yes. And they also have their own token that actually is responsible for the solving of remittance of, of issues. So this shows that um, that the banking in institutions, if you have such a huge bank backing up this technology, this shows that it could actually be the door opening banks and other financial institutions into this space. Yeah, And it's quite very exciting to see that happening. Yeah, So we hope this can be replicated yeah 
Um, over, we have quite a number of banks that are supporting blockchain technology and slowly as they transition in here, we are hoping to see more traction in the financial institutions. Yeah, and this could actually really, really hold the market up and see us, you know, move, yeah, gain a lot of traction in this market in the coming future. Pretty much. Now, David, what is going on in the international and money market as well? We do know now we don't have improving uh, borrowing rates for the dollar. In any case, how have they influenced the price of the Bitcoin, uh, David? Yeah, uh, good question. I think, again, we've seen uh, a lot of... Uh, collateralization, if I can put it that way, uh, yes. you know, between the dollar and Bitcoin, you know, um, every time there's talk of uh, inflation, every time there's talk of uh, fiscal policy, uh, this, it, it tends to affect the price of Bitcoin. So this time around, yes, uh, the dollar is getting stronger and obviously uh, that also contributes to uh, you know the strength of Bitcoin. Yes, but on the, in the long run, we also need to look at it from a different perspective. We need to look at it like uh, in the sense that now, when institutions are coming in, they are looking at this the long term. You know, uh, institutions are you know uh, playing the long game. So, as much as uh, the strength of the dollar may affect, I think in the long run also. Um, Bitcoin will continue to get stronger, uh, you know, as uh, Ali says, adoption will be key here. And, and, and also, just to mention this, a lot of the volatility that we see in Bitcoin as well uh, is really because of uh, adoption. You know, Bitcoin has still not been adopted as widely as uh, we imagine. It's not like the dollar, for example, uh, which is widely accepted. So the volatility will always be there until you know a certain amount of traction or adoption takes place yes so yes the dollar will affect in the short term but i think in the long term uh, adoption of bitcoin uh, will just continue to grow up Alice, you hear exactly what David is saying, that while this volatility that we're talking about here is actually sometimes caused by that adoption rate that indeed we do expect that it's going to get there. But Alice, somebody's going to ask you, is it until a lot of governments are going to be an accepting of the Bitcoin that we're going to see a market stabilization trend? Well, yeah, yeah, most certainly, yes. Yeah, I agree with what um, David is saying in as far as that is concerned, yeah? Yes. So we need to keep in mind that um, the more institutions we have on board, yeah, the more stability we will see in the market because institutions are in for the long run, yeah? Uh, and they come, of course, in with new investing uh, strategies, new hedging strategies, yeah? And we should also keep in mind that um, uh, it's an interconnected network yeah so uh, if they move in sync here yeah, and they're all in this for the long run definitely we'll see a lot of stability we'll, we'll see a reduction in volatility yeah uh, because uh, institutions are in for the long run yeah they, they don't just jump in and out uh, the same way retail investors do yeah so yes. in the past we've seen the market dominated by retail investors but now we are seeing a completely new trend that's coming up uh, as a result of more institutional adoption that came in from mid last year up until right now where we are at yeah so it's actually a very exciting time and uh, we hope that we'll see more and more of this yeah with the likes of JP Morgan and you know other financial institutions and hedge funds pushing for the for the drive and the adoption of, of the asset Pretty much. Yeah. David, as we come to the end of this conversation, we're talking about 39K as the new one that is sort of making us say, well, we are back to the green. What do you expect we're going to push towards the end of this year, David? Do we expect to see another push and pull in, in the value of Bitcoin? Uh, yes, definitely. That will always be there, Simba. Um, yes. And... Uh, and I think it's also good for the market because uh, it tells you there's a bit of activity, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of interest, 
and that's really what we want to see. We don't want to see a trend like we saw where Bitcoin is just going up and up because that can come down. Uh, it can bring about a huge crash. Yes. So I think that up and down movement is uh, pretty healthy for Bitcoin. Pretty much. Alice, do we expect to go beyond this 39K? By how much are we expected to go beyond this 39K value? Uh, yes, that, that is definitely there. Yeah? Even looking at uh, the trends, um, what has happened in the past and what is currently going on, yes. looking also at the charts from a technical analysis perspective, yeah, uh, we do see, we foresee a, a huge jump yeah, with more adoption definitely, but we foresee it in a more stable way than what happened uh, previously, yeah, what happened last year. Yeah. So uh, it's actually very exciting for us. When we see even the price come down, we're like, oh, now we are getting Bitcoin at a discount, you know. So we uh, buy in and hedge you know, our positions. And as it keeps on going up, we also welcome the retracements because they're actually there to show stability in the market. How big was China's crackdown in sort of destabilizing the price of Bitcoin Islands? Oh, it was, it was very big, very, very big. But even as, as much as we, we saw what happened, yeah, that is exactly one of the huge reasons that led to the initial crash. Yes. But as we saw that happening, we saw now, you know, institutions who are holding their long-term positions come up with new solutions instantly because they're really supporting the technology. Yeah? Yes. So when we saw that, we saw at least there's a lot of confidence in the market. Yeah? And there's a lot of uh, uh, forces that are backing the support of the technology and no one wants to see that market crash so definitely we can see that as we are experiencing challenges we have strong hands and forces holding the market and the fundamentals and providing solutions to these challenges so it's very exciting for us to see that too david clear the conversation this morning i mean we've said it's institutions now versus the government what holds more weight because if you look at some of the governments that are in accepting of bitcoin they're just a handful but if you look at institutions that are coming in yes there are bigger institutions like jp morgan and amazon who is going to win especially when it comes to stabilizing the price of bitcoin government versus institutions uh, to be honest, I, I really don't see uh, governments really coming out boldly and uh, supporting Bitcoin. Uh, yes. I think we are more likely going to see institutions uh, jumping in and, uh, you know, uh, moving the markets uh, in a much stronger way than governments would ever do. Governments, on the other hand, can help uh, in terms of regulation. Uh, but I, I, I think this is still very shaky. Uh, so I would go for institutions uh, at this rate uh, and for very good reasons. Pretty much. Alice Nange, crypto trainer and founder Zidin Technologies, and David Gitonga, who's the managing director of Bitcoin KA. Thank you very much for taking your time to speak to us here at Metropole's uh, Business AM. Thank you, Simba, for having us. Anytime. All right, now. Moving on, the widespread distress in the real estate sector during the COVID-19 pandemic has seen defaults on mortgages jump 48% to $70.5 billion as the year to March. Now, the latest Central Bank of Kenya data indicates that mortgages recorded the highest growth in non-performing loans from, now wait for it, $47.5 billion in a March last year, with unpaid mortgages increasing by 9.1 billion shillings, or a 14.8% increase in the three months to March. Now, sector analysts indicate that a string of job losses across nearly all sectors since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in Kenya in March last year has been the accelerator to the misfortunes that the real estate sector is experiencing with workers who took mortgages on the strength of their payslips experiencing defaults. These are saying workers who took mortgages on the strength of their payslips with the slowdown in the real estate hurting property developers who are finding it difficult to sell units that were built on loans. Good. Just before we jump into that, let's look at the lending of the commercial banks um, in 
to the real estate sector in the country and you can say that indeed it was not on a downfall in a 2020 because we have been speaking how the real estate sector has been trying to correct and it seems as if indeed even as we got in the COVID-19 pandemic banks were still extending credit to the real estate sector because you can see that is a general trend all the way from January to October 2020 albeit that little decrease in uh, October 2020. Let's cross up and see exactly also um, the commercial developments or the gross uh, non-performing loans trend confirmed again by that margin in uh, 2020. Now the CBK data indicates that the real estate sector is also contributing a bigger chunk to that trend that we have there this morning. And you can see exactly how it's been jumping or jumped again from January all the way to November 2020. Let's cross over and see exactly where we are in non-residential buildings completed all the way to 2019. Yes, they have been increasing, sort of supporting that sentiment that indeed banks have also been lending heavily to the real estate sector in the country. This morning, let me introduce Gabriel Amwendo to the conversation. Gabriel, good morning, sir. Good morning, Simba. How are you doing? Happy to have you around. We're doing fine. Let me begin with Fidelis. Fidelis, first question, that the real estate sector has been correcting since 2018. Has the COVID-19 pandemic changed that graph? And if indeed, to what direction, Fidelis? Um, good morning, Simba, once more. Good morning. And thank you for your question. Uh, yes, the real estate sector was correcting, and definitely the COVID-19 pandemic had an impact on the real estate sector. Yes. Uh, because uh, it made the real estate uh, sector uh, correct in the negative form now. Yes. It was improving, but then with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw that uh, for the thematic sectors, most of them uh, ended up recording reduced rental prices and rental rates across all sectors. But then currently, uh, as we are progressing with the post-recovery strategies in the real estate sector, we can see that uh, we expect uh, we are more neutral about the performance because uh, some sectors such as the residential sector continue to uh, record like improved returns while sectors such as the commercial office sector continue to record reduced returns because um, uh, there are more uh, more people uh, are moving into work from home strategies so we are seeing that there's no demand for commercial office spaces uh, which uh, in turn brings the returns low. For the retail sector, there have been improving rental rates. Uh, however, we have seen an oversupply of uh, space in the retail sector, especially in the Nairobi uh, metropolitan area. However, we are, we are seeing like the expansion of local and international retailers is cushioning the sector. Yes. Yes. So the real estate sector has been correcting. However, the COVID-19 uh, affected, but we are more neutral on the performance going forward. Pretty much. Oh, just before I bring in Gabriel, Fidelis, when we talk about that overall data, and you can actually see uh, what we're talking about, those defaulted mortgages increasing by, again, 14.8% in our 2021. But when you look at that data for commercial banks lending to the real estate sector, it improved all the way in a 2020. Did they run into, uh, I, I would say, into a surprise in a 2021 when they realized that, well, actually, the economy is when it's not performing in 2021. How do we put that data together? Where there's increased lending, yes, but then you find the default rate is also increasing. Well, uh, with the increased lending, I would say some of uh, some of the reasons why uh, the banks are more, um, let's say they are more, uh, 
they are positive that the real estate sector will do well and this yes. has been supported by uh, uh, reasons such as there has been uh, like the increased uh, number of uh, building approvals going forward despite the fact that last year there was um, uh, like uh, a period where there were no approvals in around June. So um, the banks are more uh, uh, were more uh, positive that the performance will be good. However, uh, we are seeing that um, uh, with the reduced um, with the commercial office uh, sector uh, being facing reduced um, demand, uh, people are not able to service um, rent and such. So with the layoffs and the and the and the reduced uh, uptake of spaces, we see that um, uh, there is more uh, default in terms of uh, payment. Yes. Yeah. Pretty much, Gabriel. We also like to start on that point that when you look at that data, you're going to say that indeed the trend was pointing northwards, is that banks were not shying away from lending to the real estate sector in the country. But come 2021, the Central Bank of Kenya is telling you, well, you see, the real estate sector was also leading in terms of the defaults that we experienced across the commercial uh, banking um, sector. How do you synthesize that, um, the Gabriel? Uh, so, well, one thing to first remember is that uh, commercial banks, even internally, they have uh, sort of a limit within which they can lend to each sector, what they would prefer to lend to each sector. Yes. Uh, real estate being very capital intensive, it's very likely there some banks have reached that limit. And then with the bad loans comes a problem. Yet, uh, what the real estate sector needs at this point in time is quite a bit of continued structuring. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about uh, if a loan was five, six years, uh, uh, we're literally talking about taking it to a 10-year, 12-year uh, facility. Uh, if the mortgage was a 10-year, I think uh, stretching it out uh, is a better uh, alternative. Uh, this means that these historical assets will stay on the bank for quite a while. Now, um, in terms of the sector's performance, I mean, uh, I think the household sort of mortgage uh, the segment has been hit uh, quite significantly. And this is because, uh, you, you know, when you're looking at a mortgage, there are two things. Is the mortgage, is the house you're buying or the property a good security? Do you have the cash flows to meet uh, the repayments? So whether it's a good security might not have changed much, but the issue is really cash flows. If you've lost your job or something, uh, it takes a lot of time to, uh, to kickstart it. And the mortgages form a very at the cash outlay for most individuals. So then uh, recovery requires a lot of structure. And really, that's what I see. Uh, real estate, as much as uh, Eli says, the view currently is neutral. I agree with that. Uh, but I think uh, for a proper recovery to be achieved, uh, then we're talking about restructuring one from the bank's perspective. Uh, we don't necessarily need to call all of this bad uh, Some restructuring would help uh, for that sector. And it's a very long term investment so that will change two is in property developers as well as office developers in terms of their offering customers uh you can offer rent on plans you can offer um you know sort of surprise selling more office space than uh, the leases for commercial space so just a few it's a time for the innovative in short we've yes. seen massive price cuts so yeah i mean all the players just have to uh, get their thinking hats on uh, yes. that's really out of this. Yeah. So, Gabriel, when you look at exactly what's going on, we are also the, that report is also saying that there have been increased auctions in in that specific sector now in 2021. It looks as if yes, indeed, you're saying long-term restructuring. It actually did happen um, as we got into 2020, but it looks as if that one-year period was not enough to settle down, but. Question being therefore, uh, Gabriel, are, is the real estate sector still exposed, even as we talk about 2021 being a recovery year for majority of the sectors in the country? Uh, still heavily exposed. Um, I think uh, one year is a very short time uh, real estate, even in terms of debt restructure. 
Yes. Uh, one year really does. You can get me? Yeah, yes, Gabriel. I just wanted to jump in. I'm sorry for that. That even for a sector that was correcting prior to the pandemic, we'll expect that one year is enough. No, it's not. Uh, yes. So look at it this way. Uh, how long does it even look uh, take you to sort of set up uh, a bill? Uh, and how long, like if you're talking about a commercial building, how long does it take you to even get uh, uh, the right kind of clientele? It takes you about three to four years. Yes. Uh, from construction to getting the correct clientele. That's one. Two, so if you look at the uh, uh, hotel industry, which is also part of real estate, uh, remember uh, someone could have invested in the property separate from the operator. So that is considered uh, real estate still. Now, uh, you could spend half a billion renovating a hotel and recover it over five years. So you see, we're talking about very long uh, period for this kind of money. So one year is actually not enough. So that's why you're seeing a lot of price drops in apartment. Uh, so developers are taking a big hit. Uh, that's why you're seeing these kind of bad laws. One year is really not enough. Uh, I think we need targeted uh, measures uh, for this kind of sector. Uh, that is the only way that you will allow this sector to come back. Uh, very capital intensive. Uh, one year is really not enough. We, we should be talking, there's a reason mortgages over, across the world are 20, 25 years. So if in Kenya you're given a mortgage for five, seven years, uh, you can see the, the, the problem. You are hitting my cash flows very hard. So what you should be doing is uh, I recommend uh, our banks are allowed to go 15 years plus. Yes. And that is would be beneficial uh, for most people. Pretty much. Let me take a short break here on a business. And once we come back, we'll just ask Fidelis. And if we're talking about mortgages really underperforming again in 2021, is it all gloom and doom? Or there are some segments within the real estate sector that are pointing northwards once we come back here on a business. Um, <laughs> 